We took our 2004 40th anniversary Mustang out for a spin. You know, it's a shop car around here at Tech Garage. So the bottom line is we have 113 original miles on this car. Well, besides the low fuel chiming at us, we have a check engine light. You know, even time can be a killer on some of these sensors and some of the things that are going on. I got a hard brake pedal and a check engine light. So there's some extensive diagnosis today on Tech Garage. Welcome to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, we got our trusted pony car back into the shop, and we have a P code. It's a P0171. That is a lean code, too much air, not enough fuel, and it sounds familiar, Dave. Sounds very familiar, John. I've uh. seen past episodes. <laughs> you guys fixed a, a leaking manifold, and that was the code that you had there, and I bet you this is a, this is a redo for you guys. Are you yeah. saying a recheck at Tech Garage? Uh, well, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm thinking not happen. I don't bet on it. I'll tell you what, we have to start with the basics. It could be a recheck. That's okay. Go back and check your work. Happens. We need to check it with the Power Smoke Pro by Redline Detection. Dave, we're going to step it up this year. We used a smoke machine before. This time, we're up to the top level, man. Well, and talk about top level. 4,500 GM dealerships use this all across the country. So this is the state of the art, right? Here. This is it. And, and the reason why, we're going to actually boost up this pressure, man. 40 times a regular smoke machine. That's right. 40 times. That means that I can actually pressurize the system. So let's say the booster or more importantly, a turbocharged engine, we're boosting that. If we get any leaks in that, that's super dangerous with a lean condition. So if I can boost the pressure and simulate it, how it's running, that's a win. Yeah, right? you don't want to start the engine if you have any problems like that. So this is this is the safest way to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, Redline Detection thought of everything. And here's a kit you can use for an easy connect kit. You can bust open the EVAP line and get in there. You know, that stops you from disturbing the system. I hate doing that because you start creating leaks. So this is the way to go. Or they actually have this bladder, Dave. This is really, really cool. Check that out. All right. I think I'm seeing how this works here. Yep, yep. I'm going to okay. take an air source okay. from an air source, and we don't want to go too high, but watch that bladder right there, Dave. Ah, uh -huh, yeah. Man, like nothing. Yeah, that I've seen up. this in, in drain lines, like outside of the house. Yep. Yeah, if you get some, some gunk in there, it disinflates and shoots water out the other side. Same concept. I love yeah, it. Yeah, incredible. It's going to seal up the system. Very it's going to cool. seal it up. So you want to yep. stick it in the intake manifold. I already have it off there, basically yep. in the air runner. All the way. That's good. Just a go. little bit poking out. That's yep. fine. But we don't want the rubber piece poking out. Okay. I'm going to connect that to the air supply right there. Dave, tell me when you see it start to swell up a little okay. bit. And I'll watch the pressure just to make sure we're not exceeding it. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, look at that. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's like a snake swallowing dinner right oh, there. Oh, yeah. man. That's too cool. That's now, cool. We got that in there. So what we want to do is we want to introduce smoke into the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a shop supply, plug it into the back, and I love it. They thought of everything. You got AC or DC. I got it switched over to DC and connected to the battery. Now the key to this machine is right here. This is the beauty. So what's going on here is I'm actually going to turn it on and create smoke. Not just smoke though, if I turn it on, I can actually pressurize it. Now that's the beauty of it. So once I start to build up some pressure, I don't want to get too crazy. I'll go up a little bit, 510. I just want to build up a little pressure for an intake manifold. I got the option of doing more and then watch this. Whew, voila, now that's a ton of smoke, that brother. That is cool. So I'm going to give you that, plug it right. in. Very good. And now I'm getting nervous because we're back to that recheck portion. Uh -huh, the moment of truth, right? <laughs> yep. Red line detection also sent the light. We've plugged that into the battery already, so I got a good powerful light so I can see the smoke, and I'm going to go right here. Dave, why am I going right here? You're going right there because that's where you had the leak before, <laughs> and... Yeah, it's not I was wrong. There. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not leaking there. Yep. No recheck. Right. No recheck. <laughs> so here we go. So we'll just look around. I'm sure it's coming out somewhere. I don't see anything anywhere. I don't see anywhere anywhere. Now you may see some residual. I mean, this is not a sealed system. It's an yeah. intake manifold and still a nothing. little bit over here, but nothing. So so where's it going? Well, that kind of leads me back to that original diagnostics. Do you remember when we had a hard brake pedal? Yes, sir. Yep. Coming in, we got a super hard brake pedal. That kind of leads me towards the brake booster because mm -hmm. if I didn't have vacuum, that would be a hard pedal. Now, Makes some sense. brake boosters, Dave, they have a check valve like this one. So right. the smoke's actually not coming through. So I got one here. If you don't have a check valve, you're fine. You could pull this off. Watch this. Not only smoke, yeah. but pressure. Now I'm going to plug this one in right here. Go into the booster. And now I'm introducing smoke into the booster, which is cool. Not only smoke. Yeah 
pressurized smoke. Yeah, now it's not going to go through because you'll see in a little bit. We'll take one of them apart and look inside, but we got Josh inside the car. Josh, push the brake pedal and see what's going on. Let's wait a couple of seconds, let it fill up. I'm thinking the smoke now with the check bulb open inside should be bellowing out in the car. What do you see, Josh? Lots of smoke. Try not to choke. <laughs> It's like, it's like an 80s music video in there, isn't it? <laughs> Lots of smoke. I'm not trying to choke. Yeah, there you have it. I mean, it was really just that easy. We can go ahead and shut it off now, oh. but we're introducing smoke into the system. Bam, it's coming out inside the car. PO 171, lean condition, too much air, not enough fuel, dangerous for the car, super easy to find. Cool. Now, the deal, I need to go ahead and either pull these bolts or get up under the dash and start working on the booster. So, um, rock, paper, scissors to decide who does what. <laughs> no. You're gonna make me do it anyway, don't worry about it. I'll just do it. <laughs> Good point. I'll tell you what, I'll start out here. Dave will shimmy under the dash. You yes, stick around yeah, sure because, he will. You stick around because we're gonna show you exactly how a booster works and take a look inside and see where that smoke was actually passing through. When we return with more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com is brought to you by Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radios since 1977. Brotherstrucks.com, your number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GMC truck restoration. And by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. There's your booster buster. Boy, I'll tell you what, mine was super easy, Dave. I don't know what's going on with you, but here's the deal. I had two bolts out here, kind of connecting the master cylinder to the booster. Super easy to get to, zip those off. Once I zip those off, well, I took the master cylinder and I tried to manipulate it out of the way without removing the brake line so we don't have to bleed the system. Success, we Smart. did it. But I had the brake switch on there, the low brake indicator light, so I had to fight with that a little bit. I got it unplugged, got it away, and voila. I don't know what took you so long. I don't know what took you so long. Take a look at this. I've got four bolts back here. Uh, first thing, I went under there, and there's a cotter pin that's, that's holding on the, the brake switch. So I had to pull that out. I wasn't sure if the brake switch was gonna come off <laughs> in and of itself. So I did find out it wasn't gonna budge. So I had to do the four bolts first so I was able to pull the rod out through the firewall. So those four bolts, John, I'm standing on my head. Trying to get to all four, it was ridiculous. But I uh, got them out and uh, sweating like sweating like crazy. Uh, got those four bolts out and then was able to pull the rod out at the same time and pull the brake switch out with it. And at that point then you were able to to grab it, yep, and uh, I was able to push it out to you. Manhandle it right out of there. Piece of cake. You just reverse the procedure, but Dave, don't take off yet. Let's talk a little bit about a booster and how our booster operates. This is pretty cool. We got one operating right here. So what happens is vacuum comes in. It's either vacuum or atmospheric suspended booster. I'll show you how it works inside. But Dave, the first thing you want to do with any vehicle is make sure we have source vacuum. Right. So I'm going to fire up this board. And if you take the vacuum line off, remember that's where we were introducing the smoke into the system oh, yeah. through the booster. I'll yep. show you that. Check valve there. Yep, but if you go ahead and put that in there, we'll we watch the gauge. Vacuum. We are good. getting vacuum, that's a good thing. So see if you can get it in there, and there you go. And we are pulling a vacuum. We're pulling, oh, look at that, about 20 inches of mercury. That's a good thing. You want anywhere from 15 to about 26 inches of mercury. If you didn't have source vacuum, well, no need diagnosing the booster because it's not gonna help you. Now, once again, before you take off, Dave, the couple things we want to do is make sure the booster's right. That's a lot of work climbing under that dash. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like our rod's the same. You got the four bolts here. This is our little vacuum chamber where the air comes in with a filter. That's pretty cool. And then on the other side, we got our two, our check valve, our rod. Man, Rock Auto hit a home run here. I'll go ahead and install it underneath. Sweet. Psych. <laughs> here you go, guy. All right, John, I'm going to go lay down inside a car for a while. Yeah, have fun. All right, so let's talk about a booster. I said there's an atmospheric suspended booster and a vacuum suspended booster. Well, real simple. You can see the diaphragm inside of here. This is pretty cool. And actually, this is what's leaking on ours. So when we were smoking it, it's coming through here, and it was actually going inside the car. So that red line detection, by the way, made in USA, pretty cool. Push the smoke in with the pressure. It went through the diaphragm, and it went in the car where Josh actually located it. It's not supposed to. This diaphragm should be completely sealed. So what happens with the booster is if you had an atmospheric suspended booster, you got 14 pounds of pressure on each side. You push this, it releases the atmospheric pressure here. You actually have it here and then you have a vacuum here. 
it moves over. Now, if you have a vacuum suspended booster, you got zero and zero, you got a vacuum on both sides. And then when you push the pedal, you actually allow atmospheric pressure in on this side and then shoop, it goes that way. That's why when you push your pedal, you hear that that atmospheric pressure is entering this side, it's pulling, it's helping you with your brakes. So the deal is, we don't want this booster to leak anymore, so we're just gonna go ahead and button this thing up, reverse the procedure, it's not a big deal. Put that new booster in, and our pony will be back on the road. But stick around, Garage Ed's coming next. There's plenty more Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Hang on, we're out of control here at Tech Garage. Top speed. Welcome back, folks. It's all about Garage Ed, and it's about the parallelogram steering system, if you didn't notice. We're going to talk about the gearbox, the system, and how to check it. Let's start right here and understand all the parts that are involved. Starting right here with the steering shaft. Now, the steering shaft, it actually goes down here, and it connects to the actual gearbox. This is the gearbox. Now, the gearbox transfers this rotary motion into linear motion down here. We'll take a look at that in a second. Down on the bottom here, you can see it's actually connected to what's called a pitman arm. The pitman arm actually transfers the energy over here to a center link. Now this is a center link, sometimes called a drag link, goes from the pitman arm all the way over to the other side. You have what's called an idler arm. Now the idle arm is attached to the frame right here and that's connected down to the center link. And then on the center link, you see here you got a tie rod, an inner tie rod, and way over here, you got an outer tie rod. And then you got the green adjuster right there that's actually gonna help you adjust it when we get to some of the alignment angles. But there's a lot of checking when it comes to this system, but really cool, I got one of these gear box, a cutaway here so you can see what's going on inside because it's really, really cool. Our gearbox here, we're gonna take our steering wheel and what we're gonna do is put it in right here to what's called a worm shaft. And I can drive it right here and you can see it's actually spinning slowly because it's massive gear reduction, but we're turning that pitman arm was connected right here to the sector shaft. Now check this out, man. We got the coolest cutaways here at Tech Garage. You can see right here, you have the actual worm gear going in and then it's connected to what's called this ball nut. Now watch these little ball bearings in here. As we turn it to the left and we turn it to the right, you can actually see them moving. That gives you a smooth transition from the actual worm gear out to the sector shaft to the pitman arm, which is turning your steering system back and forth. Now you wanna check this system, just like some other systems, get you a big old pry bar. Come over and start pushing up and down on the system. Big old pry bar, you say? I got a big pry bar. I got a big pry bar. Dave, every time I get a pry bar, yours is bigger. It actually says in my contract, John, that I get the bigger pry bar, so. That figures. Dave, how can we check this parallelogram steering system? A couple of tests we can make. Yeah, first of all, you do the dry park test, John, which uh, you grab a buddy, make sure that person is safe outside the vehicle, that you're, you're stationary, and uh, you turn the wheel from left to right, turn it back and forth, and they can just check under there, check the entire system, see if there's anything loose, if anything's flopping around, if anything's binding. You might hear it, you certainly see it, you might feel it, actually. So you're kind of doing a visual inspection, a tactile inspection as well, to see if everything's okay there. From that point, if you find that you need to change something, there's a couple of tools you can get at rockauto.com, including a tie rod end separator, which is what we have here. Now it's gonna be uh, called the stepped pickle fork kit. Uh, we just use it for uh, separating tie rods here. Now, there are different sizes depending on your vehicle. Uh, keep in mind that you're gonna tear the boot if you're not too careful. If you're gonna replace the boot, that's fine. You can go ahead and do it. Uh, but if you don't plan on replacing the boot, just be real careful when you take it off and that will uh, pry the tie rod right off here. Also, another great tool we found at rockauto.com. We've got a pitman arm separator here and I love this tool. Pitman arm is awfully hard to get off. Uh, so if you have a breaker bar or if you have an impact wrench, you wanna use this and crank it down. It will pull the pitman arm right off. Actually super simple, it comes off in one piece like that and you are good to go. And it's hard to do manually, so you're gonna need some help from, uh, from a special tool. You can get it at rockauto.com. Coming up next, if you are intimidated by schematics and by wiring, then you are gonna love our master technician tech tip. That is all coming up next on Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Don't miss it. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by NH Oil Undercoating, the official oil-based rust prevention system. Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. And by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. Well, here at Tech Garage, we got the coolest demos on the planet. 
Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, it's time for the Master Technician Tech Tip. And this time we're talking about reading schematics. Ooh, don't change the channel. I know, it seems intimidating. We can simplify it for you. Anytime you're messing with an electrical system, you want to make sure you have a schematic. I have mine right here. Actually, you guys can take a look at it with me. You want to study that prior to touching any electrical systems. It all starts at the top. We like to go conventional style from the battery to ground. We go up at the top. You can see the battery right there at the fuse block. It runs down a brown wire. And then it goes through a heater control assembly. That's kind of your switch, what you're going to run. From that switch, we're going to go through either low, medium, medium one, medium two, or high. Then we're shooting over to the blower resistor, which is a resistor. It actually steps voltage down. That's cool, because you can look at that resistor for a second. You can see it steps down. Each resistance is going to grow, and the voltage is going to drop. So if we're going in low, we're going through the top. All the way down, we're going to have a little bit of voltage. If we're coming down directly by high, we're going to have all the voltage. I'll demonstrate it for you. Then you come down from that, and you'll see the blower control down there and the motor. That's exactly what's going to happen. Here it is in action. We got our board right here. Coolest demo on the planet, man. AC system laid out. You can see it starting right here at the battery, just like we said. We go up to the blower switch. From the blower switch, we're going to these resistors. These are actually mechanical resistors that are going to drop some voltage. And then we're going to go over to the blower motor and run the blower motor. Now, how does it work? You want to check yours? Switch over to voltage. Find a suitable ground. I got one right there. I'm just going to come to the power right here which is going to the blower motor. You can see there's zero. Well, obviously it's not running. If I turn it on and I turn it on low, what's happening is all that voltage is getting stepped through these resistors. We got about five volts, the motor's running pretty slow. If I step it up one, we get a little more voltage. We skip one of them. When we skip one of those, we don't have as much voltage drop. We get a little more voltage. Go up to the next one. We skip two of them. Now we're just going through one of them. We get a little more voltage. What's happening to the motor? It's going faster. Then high, we just bypass them all. When we bypass them all, we send the voltage right to it. We're good to go. So if you had one of the switches or one of the voltages there and the motor's not running, you have a motor problem. But let's say, for example, you didn't have the voltage. You would just have to trace it back. It's strategy-based diagnosis, my friends. Just go to the component, work your way back, find out where you're losing that voltage. Now, if you have a computerized car, no different. We just got rid of this guy right here. And what we did, we put a little computer in there that pulse width modulates the blower motor on, off, on, off, medium, or we just go on 100% of the time, that's high, but you can still check that with a DVOM. Well, I hope this gives you a little hand when it comes to electrical, but you know, whether it's electrical or mechanical, Tom and Dave have you covered. Well, that's right, John, Tom, and the folks at rockauto.com always say, all the parts your car will ever need. And it's not just a slogan, Tom. It's actually what you guys do. You know, I always notice when I go to Rock Auto, I'm going to... Whoa, 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 whoa. I Sorry. am interrupting this rockauto.com segment because I never get to talk to Tom. By all means, feel free. Tom, I have to say, really, with this COVID, it's been a horrible thing. But, you know, locally in the parts houses and stuff like that, I'm trying to call and get parts. And there's a supply chain problem that's going on. I mean, we're having a really hard time. Shops as well getting parts. Now, we've been getting parts forever from rockauto.com. And quite frankly, we get a big old shopping basket. Yeah, I mean, no I problem. have all the choices. A couple of them are out of stock, but not very much. We order on Friday. Bam, it's here. We're rolling with the show. How do you guys avoid that? supply chain problem. We've always offered a huge selection so customers have a choice of the brand and specifications they prefer and that's come in super handy during the supply chain issues. If one manufacturer can't get a washer, can't get a bolt, is waiting for a shipping container from some other country, we'll have another manufacturer that has the parts and, and we can get them to the customer. Absolutely. I heard the shipping containers are more than the parts. <laughs> anyway, I found a couple things and I was a little leery to do it, but it was out of stock. I clicked on it. Bam. Next day comes up with a notification on my email. It's there. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's super handy. It, it, it times out after like a couple months, but it'll let you know, hey, we still don't have this. And you can enter your email address again and it'll let you know when it eventually shows up. Tom, I have to tell you, my wife's got a 2015 Tahoe. It's got a square and a round coil. I didn't have the car here, so I just went to the website. I picked the one with the heart on it. It was a win. Speaking of win, got a car to finish. Sorry to interrupt. Better get back to work. Tom, the little touches you guys think of, the, the hearts. The, the selections, the, the order history is something we talked about and, and remind everybody how that works. Yeah, you don't have to have an account, but if you, if you create an account, you can go back and see 
the parts you ordered for your car for six months ago, 10 years ago, figure out when you last did maintenance, and, and uh, it's a great reminder I need to do maintenance again. You don't, no more little scraps of paper and, and notes trying to keep track of that Perfect stuff. Perfect for oil and filters and things like that. RockAuto.com has just about everything, and they've thought of everything. Check them out at RockAuto.com. Well, it's looking pretty good under here. The new booster got the vacuum hose reconnected. Man, that's another win for Tech Garage. And you know what, Dave? I'm loving it, man. I'm digging this pony car. So what'd you feel? Is everything feeling good in there? No, it feels great. Uh, no hiss. Uh, everything's good. I think we fixed the problem. Good. Got a brake pedal, no hiss. That's a win. Also, Dave, uh, you want to clear the code. You want to make sure you drive it, take it through its cycle, drive cycle kind of deal. We want to make sure that code doesn't reappear, that P0171, which was a lean code. That's a dangerous thing. So, you know, we always verify the repair. And I have to admit, I have to eat my words on that code. It, it's not a recheck, it was the same code, but it was a different problem creating that code. Absolutely, and you know, you should always go back and recheck your work no matter what, but that's good, you know, our pony car, it's always given us some new surprises, and I kind of like it, I think we'll keep it around. You got it, and there's lots of great vehicles around here, we've got lots of things lined up outside the door, which means there's gonna be more Tech Garage for you next week. We're gonna do it at the same time, so be sure to join us then. In the meantime, we're all over social media, so check us out, drop John a note, tell him he's handsome, and tell him what a good job he's doing. <laughs> Until next week, we'll see you right here at Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. So long.